River Churn starts in Gloucestershire in a tiny place called Seven Springs, just south of Cheltenham. From here, it flows through several small villages through the Roman town of Cirencester. It then helps feed the man-made lakes of South Cerny Water Park and finally joins the upper reaches of the River Thames just outside Cricklade in Wiltshire. I decided to do a feature on this river as I've always admired the way it dramatically snakes through the fields and meadows en route to its confluence. Join me as I follow the river's journey from its source at Seven Springs. We'll be tracking it as far as Sirencester. I'll also be investigating the common belief that this river could actually be the River Thames as opposed to a tributary. We start at Seven Springs. Nestled away in a hollow by a lay-by on the A346, about three miles out of Cheltenham is the source of the River Churn. Many drive past this location, some would even enter this lay-by not knowing about this little haven which can be found at the bottom of several stone steps. As the name would suggest, there are indeed seven springs bubbling out the ground to give the churn a good head start. The spring is located behind a high limestone escarpment, which is Lake Hampton Hill. On the opposite side of the road here is a pub which is conveniently called the Seven Springs. Immediately next to the pub, a small stream forms a lake where the churn continues to flow from. The hills to the southeast of Cheltenham are unique in that any water flowing off the back of the hills eventually finds its way to the River Thames. Any water flowing off the Cheltenham side will eventually find its way to the nearby River Severn via a small network of tributaries. This brings me nicely on to a dispute that has been active for many years. Where is the true source of the River Thames? In 1937, a heated debate in Parliament maintained that the official source of the Great River starts at Thames Head near Kemble, in a straight line that is around 11 miles away from here at Seven Springs. There is no geographical reason why Seven Springs shouldn't be the official Thames source, after all, Thames Head near Kemble spends most of its time dry, only seeing water after heavy rainfall. Seven Springs flows continually all year round. Giving such an official honour to this location would however cause some problems. Currently the nearby River Severn holds the record as the longest river in Great Britain. If Seven Springs was made the official Thames source, the Thames would become Britain's longest river by approximately nine miles. Now that would upset a few people. That said, the local parish council have erected a sign at the top of the steps here to celebrate the idea that Seven Springs being the true source of the River Thames. It's an alarming thought that a droplet of water landing in these waters here will eventually find its way to Southend-on-Sea in Essex and out into the North Sea. With some aerial footage of the site, I'll leave this debate here. You can decide for yourself where the true source actually starts. Both locations have credible arguments as to why they should be given start of Thames status. We now fly from Seven Springs directly to the small village of Coberley. At this point the churn is nothing more than a small stream having risen from the ground less than a mile away. 
It is joined by a brook which flows in front of the village to form a stronger stream to the south. Flowing on from Coberley, the small village of Cowley features a large manor house. The churn is joined by two more small brooks to the north of the village. As a result, the river is significantly wider than it is just over a mile away in Coberley. Just down the road from the village, in Cockleford, we find our second pub by the river churn, the Green Dragon. At Colesbourne, the River Churn crosses underneath the A345 and stays on the left-hand side of the road for its journey to Sirencester. The A345 follows the general path of the Churn until Sirencester. The small village of Colesbourne features a manor house which encompasses Colesbourne Park. The park is open to the public during the winter months as it reportedly displays the most impressive bloom of snowdrops in England. Nearer the manor house is an impressive arboretum which dates to the late 1800s. It is on this site Hillcott Brook joins the churn to create yet a larger flow southwards. Adjacent to the park stands St James Church which although largely rebuilt dates back to the 12th century. Rentcombe is the next village along the river. Much of the village is dominated by the college, a privately run school with international acclaim. Sadly, I wasn't able to provide any drone footage of the village due to flight restrictions as there's a private airfield very near. In this airfield, which is unsurprisingly named Rencombe Airfield, the Aero Superbatics wing walking team are based, flying a fleet of modified Boeing Stearman aircraft from the 1930s. We now arrive at North Cerny. Edging closer towards Sirencester, the churn continues to run alongside the A345, most noticeably so in this small village. As with most settlements in the area, the buildings are built from the distinct Cotswold honey-coloured limestone. The ancient Grade 1 listed 12th century church is no exception and stands isolated on the other side of the main road, opposite the village. The Bathurst Arms is a popular pub, one of the few places you can actually sit next to the churn, not to mention the ability to enjoy a drink and a meal at the same time. With much of the river flowing through private property, the pub is a welcoming location to enjoy the water. From this aerial footage, a footpath can be seen which brings you adjacent to the river. This path can be accessed from the centre of the village next to the primary school. After walking for around 10 minutes, the dramatic meanders and small water pools can be discovered. This is the very same pool as seen from the ground. As the river widens at this point, a footbridge carries a diverging footpath across the water. From the south side of North Cerny, the river continues to wind its way through the countryside. Edging closer towards Sirencester, 
The churn will pass through the hamlet of Perrots Brook and the village of Bornton. Finally, we arrive at Cirencester, often referred to as the capital of the Cotswolds. Built upon the churn, Cirencester is a Roman town which bore the name Corinium. It would seem one should have a basic grasp of Latin if living here. Hovering above the large open space of Abbey Grounds, the church in the foreground is in fact the Church of St John the Baptist. The Abbey itself stood in the grounds below as an Augustinian monastery, built originally in the 12th century. On the other side of the grounds, the churn pass is the main part of the town. Within the grounds, a lake is formed that is fed by the river. The parish church has stood in this location in various forms since the 12th century. Through various rebuilds and restorations, it resembles a Gothic style and provides a focal point for the main street through the town. <laughs> 